Second order linear ODs with constant coefficients have the form a times y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants and y is the unknown function of x. Now, uh, we can solve all of these equations using a simple guess and ansatz for the solution in this form of an exponential, e to the rx, where the coefficient r in the exponent is unknown and is to be determined. So plugging this guessed solution into the left-hand side of the ODE, we get e to the rx multiplied by a times r squared plus b times r plus uh, c. Now, because e to the rx is never zero, it must be this quadratic that is zero. Therefore, we can find and the value of the coefficient r by solving this quadratic equation, which we can do using the quadratic formula. So we get the solution, um, maybe solutions, r1 and 2, um, by applying the quadratic formula. We have three cases to distinguish. If the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, the expression under the square root, is positive, then we have two real distinct solutions, r1 and r2. If b squared minus 4ac is zero, then we have a single repeated real solution, r1 equals r2 equals r, so we denote the um, common uh, solution by r. And finally, when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is negative, then we have a negative number under the square root, therefore we get complex number solutions, namely the solutions will be of the form alpha plus i times beta and alpha minus i times beta. These are called complex conjugates where alpha and beta are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. Now based on uh, which of these three cases we find ourselves in, we have three types of general solutions to this uh, linear OD with constant coefficients, namely um, these three. So if we have two real distinct roots, then our general solution is a linear combination of e to the r1x and e to the r2x. A linear combination means that we have uh, arbitrary coefficients c1 and c2 that we can pick and uh, take c1 times e to the r1x and c2 times e to the r2x and combine these at these two, two, two solutions. Now, if the real, if the we have real repeated zeros for the quadratic, then um, the general solution is a linear combination again, but this time of e to the rx and x times e to the rx, where again r denotes the repeated zero. Finally, if we have complex conjugate solutions to the quadratic, that is also called the auxiliary equation. So if we have complex conjugate solutions, then the general solution of the second order ODE reads e to the alpha times x times uh, c1 times cosine beta x plus c1, c2 times sine beta x. So in this case, it's a linear combination of e to the alpha x times the cosine of beta x and e to the alpha x times the sine of beta x. Now let's solve some of these uh, second order linear ODEs with constant coefficients. Find the general solution of the differential equation y double prime plus y prime minus 6y equals 0. Pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and have found this general solution. So what we do first is we write down the auxiliary equation. The coefficients in the ODE uh, a, b, c read 1, 1 and negative 6 respectively. Therefore, the auxiliary equation is r squared plus r minus 6. Um, to which we can apply uh, the quadratic formula. You could also factorize this quadratic if you know how to do that, um, but the quadratic formula is always will always work, so you can always rely on that. We get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6 under the square root, and it's all divided by 2 times 1, that is 2. Now this is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 24, so that's 25 under the square root. This is all divided by uh, 2, so we get negative 1 plus or minus 5, all divided by 2. Therefore, the two solutions are real and distinct. R1 could be taken to be negative 1 plus 5.
over 2, so that's plus 4 over 2 or 2, whereas R2 could be written as uh, negative 1, negative 5, 4 over 2, so that's negative 6 over 2 or negative 3. Therefore, we know that the general solution of this ODE must read y equals c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the negative 3x. Let's look at the next question. Find the general solution of the differential equation 2 times y double prime plus 12 times y prime plus 18 times y equals 0. So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and I've selected this answer. So again, we set up the auxiliary equation by collecting the coefficients a, b, c and into this quadratic 2 times r squared plus 12 times r plus 18 is 0. We need to solve this for r. Uh, so r12 by the quadratic formula is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of uh, 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times 18 all divided by 2 times 2 that's 4 so what we get is negative 12 plus or minus under the square root we have 12 squared that is 144 and then we have 4 times 2 times um, 18 so that's also 144 you can see it as 8 times 9 times 2 so that's 72 times 2 that's 144 either way we get 0 under the square root therefore it's 0 that we add or subtract all divided by 4 so we get real repeated zeros r equals negative 3 and therefore we are in the second case where the general solution of our ODE is a linear combination of e to the rx so e to the negative 3x and x times e to the rx so x times e to the negative 3x okay let's look at the next question find the general solution of this differential equation y double prime plus 2 times y prime plus 5 times y equals 0. Pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and have found uh, this solution. So again, the auxiliary equation will read r squared plus 2r plus 5 equals 0. So using the quadratic formula, we obtain r12 to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, all divided by 2. Therefore, we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, well, 4 minus tw uh, 20, so that's negative 16 or negative 4 squared. Therefore, we get, we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 1, that's the imaginary unit, and the square root of 16, all divided by 2. So the two solutions are negative 2 plus or minus, 4 times i all divided by 2 therefore these solutions are complex conjugates namely negative 1 plus or minus 2i and from this we know that alpha is equal to negative 1 and beta is equal to 2 and therefore we can write the general solution as the linear combination of uh, e to the minus x cosine b, uh, 2x and e to the minus x times sine 2x. Let's look at the next question. Solve the initial value problem where y double prime plus 4y equals 0, y at 0 is 3, and y prime at 0 is 0. And then once you find the solution, evaluate that x equals pi over 2. So pause the video and input your answer in the box now. Hope you paused it and I found negative 3 for the answer. Well, first let's just construct the auxiliary equation. So this is r squared plus 4 equals 0. There is no linear term in this case because there is no y prime in the uh, ODE. Now that means that uh, r squared is negative 4. So r12, the solutions are the square roots of uh, negative 4 and that's plus or minus the square root of negative 4 plus or minus um, the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 and that's plus or minus 2 times i. Now, these are complex conjugate solutions with the real part alpha being 0 and then beta is equal to 2. So we know that the general solution must be of the form e to the 
0 times x, so that's e to the 0 as a factor of 1, times the uh, linear combination of uh, cosine 2x and sine 2x. So that uh, 2 comes from beta being 2. Now this is the general solution. We also need its derivative uh, for the initial values. Um, so the derivative of this function is negative 2 times c1 times sine 2x. When we differentiate the fir first term, this is what we get plus 2 times c2 times the cosine of 2x. That's the derivative of the second term. Now we can evaluate these, uh, uh, the function and its derivative at x equals 0 to see uh, what the initial conditions tell us about these uh, coefficients c1 and c2. So y at 0 uh, from our solution is supposed to be c1 times the cosine of 0 plus c2 times the sine of 0. Uh, the cosine of 0 is 1, the sine of 0 is 0, therefore we get c1 uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand we know that the solution at 0 takes the value 3, so this must be equal to 3, therefore we manage to determine one of the coefficients c1 equals 3. The derivative of the solution at 0 can be found by simply plugging in x equals 0, we get negative 2 times c1 times the sine of 0, plus 2 times c2 times the cosine of 0. Now this is sine of 0 giving us 0 um, makes the first term vanish. Uh, cosine of 0 being 1 gives us 2c2 um, for this one and we know that this needs to be equal to 0 therefore uh, the other coefficient c2 must be 0. Therefore from the general solution we manage to identify these coefficients using the initial values and then we can write down the particular solution of the initial value problem being 3 times the cosine of 2x and now we can evaluate it at x equals uh, pi over 2 we get 3 times the cosine of 2 times pi over 2 that's pi 3 times the cosine of pi the cosine of pi is negative 1 therefore we get a negative 3 for the solution at x equals pi over 2 I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.